Hi everybody, today we are going to look at lab 12, psychosocial aspects of physical activity. First slide, physical activity, any body movement produced by skeletal muscles that results in substantial increase over resting energy expenditure. Next slide, physical benefits of physical activity. So PA is physical activity, I'll just say PA from now on. The Surgeon General's report on health and PA indicates the need to promote PA as a means to improve health and prevent disease. Benefits include higher bone density, reduced incidence of coronary artery disease, aids in control of adult onset diabetes, and decreased risk of developing certain types of cancer. Psychological benefits of PA. Psychological benefits include decreased anxiety, reduced depression, and improved mood. PA adherence. Less than 20% of 18 to 65 year olds exercise at sufficient levels to accrue positive benefits. More than 60% of American adults are not regularly physically active in their leisure time. 25% of adults are considered completely sedentary in younger adults, aged 12 to 21, PA declines dramatically throughout adolescence. And 50% of those who begin an exercise program drop out in the first six months. So those aren't great stats. Self-efficacy. An individual's belief in his or her capabilities to organize and execute the course of action required to carry out the actions required to produce a given outcome. Theory states that highly efficacious people are more likely to engage in or to adopt desirable patterns of PA. Self-efficacy can be enhanced through various factors, past performance, vicarious experience, verbal persuasion, and self-talk. Types of self-efficacy. Several types of self-efficacy have been shown to play a role in adherence to exercise programs. First one is task self-efficacy, the belief that one can successfully perform a task. Next one is barrier self-efficacy, the belief that one can overcome barriers that keep them from exercising. Third is scheduling self-efficacy, the belief that one can fit exercise into their life. And the last one, health behavior efficacy, examines efficacy in populations that engaged and secondary prevention of disease via rehabilitation. So rehab patients. So if you notice all those types of self-efficacy all have belief in them. So if somebody or an individual's belief in themselves and their ability to do things plays a large role in whether or not they actually attempt and complete an exercise program. Next slide, physical activity assessment. Development of instruments to measure PA is an ongoing and challenging task. As the importance of regular PA has been better understood and promoted, the need for valid and reliable measures has increased. Direct measures of PA. Getting information directly from the individual. Questionnaire, dietary annotation, or mechanical or electrical monitoring of the individual. Indirect measures of PA. Estimates usually taken by a computer or researcher. Examples include dietary assessment, body composition measurement, physiological fitness assessment, sport or recreation participation, or occupational classification. Seven day PA recall. This is what you guys will do. Commonly used direct method that has acceptable validity and reliability. Data from questionnaire is used to calculate energy expenditure and activity levels of the individual. Advantages include short recall period, easy to administer, assesses both occupational and leisure time activity, reminders about the PAR, round minutes and activity done for less than 10 minutes is not included. So it gives you an outline there of how to break down um, your times when doing your PAR. Be honest in your answers. You are not graded on your PAR results.